The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the August 8th, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, I apologize. It's just past 11 o'clock in the morning. Still in the old uh, step, step out there. But uh, So I would love to hear from you. And it gives called 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't call in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Now, send that to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside that subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show questions. Now, send the email early. Just Internet service providers, sometimes those things get delayed. And I'd like to be able to get your question. If you're going to go ahead and send one to me. Of course, inside our Tigers Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magnificent Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, you got a little bit of a mixed bag. That mix is coming from the semis, which are trading down 42 points. Otherwise, all the U.S. indices are trading to the upside. Dow is up 8 tenths of a center, 271 points. 8 tenths for the S&P, 34 points. 9 tenths for the NASDAQ, 100, 115 points. Nearly 2% for the Russell. That's trading up at 1959, 37 points to the upside. Trenders are up 167 points, a little over 1%. Gold's up 11 bucks, 6 tenths of a percent. Silver's up 76 cents, that's nearly 4% to the upside. Lights be crude up about 1% or 80 cents. Natural gas back 34 pennies. She's trading at $7.71. The 30 year treasury up 31 ticks, nearly one full point trade at 142.06. The movers in the market this morning, dollar wise, Karuna Therapeutics, 89 bucks, 63%. Magic Empire Global, 60 bucks, 62%. Those are some big movers out there. Booking holdings up about three percent or 55 tesla's up 44 five percent mercado libre up 30 bucks 2.9 percent the shakers moving to the downside buy on a tech off 17 bucks or nearly 10 percent nvidia off 13 about seven percent riata pharmaceuticals off 11 32 percent unicure off eight bucks or 31 percent end phase energy down about three percent or eight buckaroonies so what's all that mean out there let's just take a quick peek at our nine panel market update chart we look in the upper left you've got the a to b equals cd pattern now there was a small bearish engulfing candle that had formed on friday it was a doji candle that had formed on thursday so it wasn't really that tough to form that now look your price closes above 41.73 and a quarter that will negate that sell the d point pattern and uh, it says that its next target could or should be the 42.27 level. That's the 1 to 1.618 A to B equals CD price extension area. Spot volatility still well below its 50-day exponential moving average. 50 days at 25.21. The spot is at 20.86. That is bullish for the uh, spot. That is bullish for the S&P 500. The Nasdaq, the NQ. Is forming a new, it's attempting to form a new bearish structure daily profile. The resistance level there, 13,419. The support area will be down at 12,740. Now, this will not be confirmed until this evening at about 6,01. But right now, it seems pretty solid. So you know where the resistance and support level is for the NQ. U.S. dollar index, it's got a Rhodesman indicator top. It's led to a consolidation with inside its current daily profile. That range between 105.63, that's support, and 106.82, that is resistance. Gold had a TD9 count top. It took that out on Thursday. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of that. So it no longer has that topping pattern that is in play out here. And as far as where it's headed to, I'll have to look at my other gold charts. I can't recall off the top of my head. Um the next uh, price target, the upside, but we'll certainly take a look at that. Silver right now is trading above the top of its daily profile. 
which is a bullish thing. Uh, 2051 would be the level that price needs to close above today to be on its merry way and perhaps set up an A to B equals C to the upside. If we take a look at what that pattern would look like here, the A point is going to be down at the low of the trading day of July 14th. And that B point now is going to look like it's the high here from, let me just make sure, 2051. Yeah, 2051, the high from the trading day of August the 1st. And then it gets that retracement in to support the bottom of that daily profile on Thursday, August the 5th. So the one-to-one -one A to B equals CD price projection should take us to 2197. 2265 would be the number uh, for the 1.272 expansion area. Light Sweet Crude still retains its Gartley buy pattern. That Gartley buy pattern was established with this hammer candle back on July 14th. That set up a low of 88.23 and as long or 25, 88.23. And as long as price remains above that, which it is above that right now, that pattern remains in place out there. Where is price targeting? If it does continue to move higher, I would say that descending trend line is a pretty good area out there. That could take us into about the 98-ish uh, range out there. If we take a look at natural gas, natural gas doesn't have a top, but it did run into resistance. Doesn't show on this chart that resistance was a TD nine count breakdown level. If you're new to those term that terminology out here you listen to the show we'll get you up to speed relatively quickly but what price is doing right now it is with inside its daily profile it's a bullish structure daily profile that suggests that natural gas should find support between the range of 723 and 747 if we take a look at that 30-year treasury up nearly one full point right now it on Friday, came back, tested and rejected support. That was the bottom of its daily profile. That's at 140.31. Right now, you just got a consolidation between that level and the top of that profile, and that's up at the 144.09 area. So that's just kind of a good overview of the uh, markets. Let's take a look at the play-by-play. -play. What I mean by the play-by-play -play is let's switch charts to go take a look at our 30-minute time frames. Why? Because we have topping patterns that are present for each of them. So let's go see what they're communicating to us. So in the upper left-hand corner, you've got the ES Mini. The ES Mini forms a TD9 count top. That suggests that price will pull back and test its oscillator and change line. The oscillator and change line right now is 41.74. If price were to close below that, that would then signal a move back to the 41.68, 41.59, and then finally could be 41.56. 41.56 is the TD9 count breakout level. That is where this broke out from. Oftentimes, price will pull back, test that area. If it holds, that becomes a buy point. That's on the ES Mini. Now, there's profile levels I gave you, and then the oscillator and change line as well. So right now, the signal, even though you've got a nice TD9 count top, it's really neutral until price closes below that green oscillator and change line. The NQ is below its green oscillator and change line as we speak, but there's still 17 minutes left in this session. The top that uh, formed out here that we've got for the uh, NQ is wave number seven. So Basil just finished the show out there. Uh, here, this is just a very small part of the Chapman wave. If you want to really learn it, you should just simply attend his workshop. I believe that is this coming Wednesday evening. But I've got wave number seven. That is letter G. Thank you, Saratoga Bob and uh, Z inside the Tiger's Den, who really pointed this pattern out. Oftentimes, wave number seven or letter G uh, is uh, where we'll find some type of turn. In this case here, it's a turn to the top. Now, if price remains below this green oscillator and change line, that's at 13.329, that then is going to suggest move back to the 13.277 area. And if 13.277 does not hold price, then we're looking to move down to the 13.219 out there. The Russell is strong like a bull out there. It also has a TD9 count pattern, but any close above 19.59.10 will negate that. And you've got a nice TD9 count top inside of the Dow Equity Future contract but it's really a neutral signal unless price closed below 32 971 steve rhodes with tfnn we'll be back in just a few in a time of looming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education. Investors. C C call now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 203, SP's up 22. Before we went to that break, we were taking a look at the 30 minute time frame chart, noticing the uh, TD9 count tops and that wave number seven top for the uh, NQ out there, which seemed to be taking hold. So, price pulling back to test some support levels. We switched over here to the daily time frame. And a daily time frame today is going to, it appears that today will become bar number nine of a TD9 count. So, it will complete this pattern or should complete this pattern tomorrow. Now, what, what needs to occur? in order for a TD9 count in the ES Mini to uh, take place today. It needs to close above, I'll give you the price level here, needs to close above, come on, what the heck's going on, oh, man, what the heck's going on there? Sorry about that. Uh, that is very weird, I've never seen that before. Um, it's always first time for everything out there. So right now, the level that it needs to close above, this ES Mini is 40, 96 and a quarter. So as long as price closes above that, you'll effectively have a TD9 count top. Now, the high of a TD9 count pattern needs to occur on bars 8 and 9 to the bar following 9. So this pattern will not be completed until tomorrow. We can see that the oscillator and change line has changed colors, changed colors about a week and a half ago. When it does change colors and you get a topping pattern, what often will happen, the majority of the time, is price will pull back to test that level. So if price does pull back, that level right now is 40.84 and holds that area. That's the next actual entry point into a long position inside the ES Mini. If price closes below that, then we'll take a look at the profile levels. They may be different profile levels at that time. Right now, 40.30 is the top of that daily profile. If you look at the NQ, today is going to become bar number nine as long as price closes above the close of bar number five out there, which is at 12, 9, 20 and a quarter. Again, its price target to the downside is an oscillator and change line, currently printed at 12,942. The Dow has got no topping pattern whatsoever, so there's just an A to B equals CD to the upside, and that requires a bearish reversal candle to confirm a sell the D point or a Gartley sell pattern. You've got the Russell 2000 taking out, of, taking out its TD9 count resistance level, which is a bullish signal. That's at 1919. However, today is going to become bar number nine. It will complete that pattern tomorrow. What all this suggests to us, the ESNQ and the Russell are ready to make a, at least short-term topping patterns out there, signals that should complete by tomorrow. But the Dow isn't. 
So what does that mean? Well, it could mean simply the Dow is the trophy horse, folk, and folks. And with uh, with the issues that are going on around the globe out there, there's a flow of capital that is coming into the U.S. out there. So um, and that can certainly override a lot of these topping patterns and signals out there. But the Dow, whether it's the Dow Cash Indice or the Dow Equity Future Contract, needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm some type of short-term top out there. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the equity contracts. Let's go take a look at some questions here, or let's take some questions that have come in by email uh, and by in the Tiger's Den. Let's get to the Tiger's Den first. Uh, that's coming in from uh, Jimmy. Jimmy wants to take a look at ticker symbol CAL. And uh, so CAL, this is something that Jimmy's been in since about the $20 level. And uh, so if you take a look at it, you got a nice wide-ranging bar today, bar number six, headed back to a resistance area, Jimmy. That's from this uh, bearish engulfing candle from the trading day of July 22nd. That sets up a, a, a resistance area in the... I'll tell you what it is as soon as I can find it. In the uh, 2864 level, if the price can overcome that, that would be a positive and suggest price getting back to the $30 area. At that $30 area, we can see on a weekly time frame was a TD nine count top. Now that was a wide ranging bar. Ordinarily, we'd say don't short a wide ranging bar. I'd still say that here, but look at how that TD nine count pattern worked out there. That's why we want to pay attention to what's going on in the daily ES, NQ, and the uh, Russell 2000 out there. Here, it's got 29.84 is the uh, key level. So that's really what looks to me like price is gunning for with price above its green oscillator and change line on a weekly basis. You can also see it's been pretty much a consolidation, Jimmy, if we look at the weekly, I'm sorry, the monthly profiles. And that's between 2027 and 29.36. So a close above that TD9 count top is then going to suggest stay with the position. On a longer term basis, the monthly chart would say price would be targeting that 37.82 area. So that's what it looks like we take a look at Cal. So uh, uh, if you you have been long since 20, and I would say this is going to go target that uh, 30 dollar area out there, 29.64 something like that. The next question that you wanted to look at was what V? What did I type in? V V V V V V. So let's get that. It'll take just a moment here to uh, populate these charts, folks. VVV is uh, Valvoline, Inc. Valvoline uh, is another uh, position that Jimmy is in around the 28.50 area. He said it's trading right now at 28.90. And the question is, where is the uh, drop dead level, the line in the sand, so to speak? So this does have a TD9 count bottom that formed out here in the trading day of June 17th out there. So I would say that would be your area. You would throw out a figure of like 27.50. That low is 27.69. So I like your 27.50 mark, at least in taking a look at the daily time frame out here. Uh, so what do we have right now? We've got price below. Well, let me just see what's going on at the swing point. So the swing point, uh, Jimmy, was uh, May 10th, and there was volume of about 3.5 million shares. That bar from a couple of days ago, that wide-ranging bar, had volume of uh, 3.2 million shares. So price is pulling back with lighter volume. And today, if price can close above 28.64, that's the high of the swing low from May the 10th out there, the swing point from May 10th, and you get volume of less than 3.5 million, which seems really likely, you're only at 193,000 shares as we speak right now, you'll have a rejection of a swing point on lighter volume. And that says, okay, you can't bust them down, price should try to bust them up. Now bust them up here on a daily time frame, Jimmy, you're gonna run into resistance at around 30.05. That's the red oscillator and change line. If price can overcome that, then the next resistance level will be 30.67, above that 31.62. On a weekly time frame, I really don't have much other than price trading inside that hammer candle. Uh, that was, uh, it's quite a uh, hammer candle out there from May the 9th, 10 million shares. But last uh, week, a price pulled back with 16 million shares and price still in that. So the weekly chart is saying you're not out of the woods. The only way to get out of the woods here is to reject that swing point altogether. And that means you need to see a close above 29.49 out there. So that is suggesting to us that the move that we might see in VVV on a daily basis, Jimmy, is just a counter trend move. So you want to watch that 30.05 level as price approaches that area. On a monthly time frame out here, you've got a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator top. Um, has support held. You've had one month below, then back above, one month below, back above. This is the month below. I guess next month might be above out there. So really a choppy market out there. If you're asking me which of the three, two I like better, certainly it is that uh, CAL ticker symbol versus VVV. But uh, look, at this stage here, you sort of, uh, you're in around 27, 28.50. Um, I don't know with that, I'd probably just put my stop at break even. 
and uh, see if it runs from here. And if it doesn't, then, uh, you know, especially based on what we're looking at here on the weekly and the uh, monthly chart. So I hope that helps you out, uh, Jimmy. Thanks so much for the uh, request to kick off the 11 o'clock hour out there. Let's go take a look at uh, David H. wants to look at uh, Tesla. So T-S-L-A. Let's go see what David's question is. I'll read it to you momentarily. It says, hey, Steve, last week I asked you about Tesla reaching the 1092 area by expiration on August 19th. With the pullback Friday and price action today, does it have a good possibility of reaching that 1092 area? You've got 1050 calls. So all that really took place on uh, last week, it's a little bit hard to see, a little bit hard to see on this white background chart. So I'll expand it out there. What took place, David, on Friday was price pulled back and tested support. Both the green oscillator and change line in the bottom of its profile at 863.10. Price now should go. It's trading into resistance zone. It's a new profile that formed on uh, Friday. The resistance zone is 909.73 to 940.82. We'll try to answer that question as soon as we get back to this. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome uh, back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at Tesla out here. So one of the things that changed, David, from last week when we spoke about this is the new profile that formed on uh, Friday out here. So now we have a new level of resistance that we didn't have then. Prior to that, uh, the reason that we were thinking that price should be able to get up to the 1092 level, now we didn't know the timing of it, was because uh, at that stage we didn't have any kind of resistance other than the top of the weekly profile. And that still is in place. So we've got resistance at 940.82, but we also have resistance right now at the top of that weekly profile that price was unable to take out last week. And that's up at the 903.56 level. Your question specifically, do I think that it'll get to the 1050 area? Well, now it really has, it's, now it really has a battle. 
on its hands. So that's because you're inside this bearish structure daily profile level. Again, that's between 909.73 and 940.82 out there. So it's got its work cut out for it. I don't know how else to uh, put that. Now, if you did get a close above 940.82, then you got a different message there. And then you're looking at the 1092 area. So, David, I hope that helps you out with regard to a Tesla and uh, where it's headed and the uh, new level of resistance that is in place out there. We've got a request here from uh, Nicholas. Nick writes in. He says uh, he likes his time slot better. That's great. Uh, can we take a look at ACB and Tilray? Entry point for either one. So let's go ahead and uh, get into the cannabis area out here. ACB is Aurora Cannabis. Let's get these stock charts up on the screen, see what they're telling us out here. And uh, so right now you got a nice wide ranging bar. Price is taking on resistance. This is ACB that we're talking about. Resistance set up by that bearish engulfing candle that you can see out here. It's the high of the candles that it engulfs or that specific candle. So that says your resistance level here that you're just looking for price to get above, close above, I should say, is a buck seventy two. You're at a buck sixty nine right now. Now the volume on that swing point was uh, about uh, not about, it was exactly seventeen million shares. You're at eight point six today. Uh, so it is moving into that swing point with volume. So if it can overcome that, then what the charts are telling us is that Aurora Cannabis should target 201. 201 is where the next group of sellers would be, and that's the top of the weekly profile. If price can overcome that, then we're looking at a move to 378. 378 is a TD nine count breakdown area. I did move over to the uh, monthly chart out there because uh, there was no real reason to do that. So it looks real good. You're moving into a swing point with volume. If you can take out that high, then you should see move to 201. If it takes that out, then you're looking at 378. Now you're asking for an entry point out there. Um, an entry point would be a price can. So so the first entry point would be at a buck. Well, hold on. It's a new profile that just formed. This I'm noticing this morning. And that was below price, and that was, uh, wow, that was a bullish signal out there. So when a, when a profile forms below price, it is a bullish signal. When a new profile forms above price, it's a bearish signal out there. So entry point, hmm, you got to have to look at the first retracement out there, maybe on a short-term time frame, like a 30-minute chart, to try to find an entry point. Right now, that entry point would be buck forty-five, but I don't have any reason – that's the top of that new profile to suggest that it's going to get back there. Nicholas, let's go take a look at uh, Tilray out there. You also want to look at T-L-R-Y is the uh, ticker symbol. So let's go see what it is doing. Maybe this has got a little bit better pattern or a different pattern. Um, and as we oh, – it's not popular. There we go. So Tilray also – no, okay. So this is cool. So Tilray is uh, forming bar number eight today. And we know that, and this is below the TD9 count breakdown level at 454. So now Tilray is the one that I would keep my eye on. Why? Because this should complete a TD9 count top by Wednesday. Whether price gets over 454 or not, if it does form that top and price begins to pull back, then the area to be looking at, depending on whether price gets above 450 or 4 or not, it could either be 454, depending on how far above that it gets, or more likely the 394 range. 394 is the top of that daily profile out there. Now, if price does close above 454, we don't get a TD9 count top. That would be a whole different thing, but it looks like that's what we'll get. So I'd be patient here. I don't need to uh, try to chase this one. And uh, let's see if we get a short-term top in Tilray. Let's look, look back at this maybe Wednesday or uh, Thursday out there. So, Nick, thanks so much for writing in. Hope you have a uh, marvelous Monday. The next question coming in from Hector. Hector and the fuel injectors, that's Patty. They want to take a look at NVIDIA out here. So NVIDIA is pulling back. Let's go see if we can figure out where it's pulling back to. The question is, happy marvelous Monday. NVIDIA daily looking great here on this overdone sell-off. Any thoughts on that by the D point? is still, uh, so let's go take a look at what we've got on NVIDIA. So NVIDIA right now, the pullback's trading out at, let me get this also going to my other charts, NVDA. And let me make sure that we're on the white. We are. Okay. So um, we take a look at NVIDIA. It's going to negate its TD9 count. So you've just, and you've got a gap to the downside. So you now have a, in effect, a sell the D point pattern out here. But what price is doing is it's testing support. So I wouldn't be trying to short NVIDIA right here. So if we, we pull this out. You know, you could you could see that A to B equals CD pattern it actually got up to about a one to two point six one eight A to B equals CD, and you get the gap to the downside. That's your bearish reversal candle. But price is testing support, and support is the bottom of that profile. The bottom of that profile is at uh, it's hard is one seventy three eighty five. 
So prices pulled back there. If NVIDIA is still strong, strong to the long side, then this is where support would be at. Now, price is going to have to get back above that green offset and change on 179 and 28 pennies out there to be on its merry way. If price moves higher, that number is going to go up to a tad. We can see on the weekly time frame that price ran into resistance, the bearish structured profile. That's between 191.64 and 203.63. That's where the sellers are hanging out inside of NVIDIA out there. Um, if price does close below 173.85, from a pattern standpoint on the daily time frame, I don't really have anything as far as where it would pull back to. So then I would look to the weekly chart and say it'd be 171 or so. That's the red oscillator and change on. That would be the next area support. And below that would be 167.66 out there. No level of support on the monthly time frame, really, or the, the, the support I would give you out here, Hector, would be 134.59. So with regard to NVIDIA, you've got a confirmed sell the D point or Gartley sell pattern. Price is testing support. The volume on it is 46 million shares. So it's got pretty good volume out there. And it wouldn't really step in front of this uh, freight train just yet. But support may hold. But you've got big volume, 46 million shares, as I said, uh, today out here. So I just be careful with regard to NVIDIA. I wouldn't back up your truck if that's what you were thinking of doing. So hope that helps you out, Hector and uh, Patty. Next question coming in from Bob in Spokane. And Bob wants to take a look at Disney. He says that their earnings are out uh, sometime soon. I don't know if that is uh, after the bell tonight or and it's too far back for me to dig into the uh, dig into the comments here. Uh, but anyways, Disney's out with earnings soon. If we take a look at Disney, it's going to form bar number eight today of a TD9 count. Right at its breakdown level at 110.19 out here. So what does that mean? Well, first, you've got to complete bar number nine. Bar number nine tomorrow needs a, in order for a TD9 count pattern to uh, confirm out here, is going to need a close above 109.02. If it doesn't close above 109.02 tomorrow, that pattern gets negated. It doesn't even exist out here. And other than price just hitting resistance to the 110.19 area. So I don't know if uh, Disney was out with earnings today or tomorrow out there, um, but it's lining up for this potential TD9 count top as the weekly chart is running right into its resistance zone. And the resistance zone out here for Disney, it's a bearish structured weekly profiles between 111.41 and 115.39. If price ever did take out the 115.39 level, then the signal has moved to 133.59. On a monthly basis for Disney, what do we have? Looks like we've got a confirmed by the D point out there. That confirmed last month when it generated that nice uh, piercing candle. This suggested over time price should head to 133.31. So you're in a resistance zone on a weekly basis. You're forming potential TD9 count top, which we won't know until we see tomorrow's close out there. That would then suggest at least a retracement back to its oscillator and change line. And that would take us into the 104.52-ish type area out there. So that's what we're looking at when we take a look at Disney. We get back from this break, we go take a look at LTBR, a nuclear energy play for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. This coming Wednesday, August 10th, Basil Chapman will be hosting an all-day live webinar from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. Eastern Time, where he'll be presenting the technical tools based on the Chapman Wave methodology, a full in-depth course on his entire trading system. Over the five hours of live education, Basil will discuss studying and practicing entry and exit points, assessing where to add or subtract from positions, utilizing simple technical tools for holding positions longer, taking bear charts and adding notations, tools, and patterns, as well as identifying three core formations that repeat in every time frame and much more. When you sign up, you get a chart booklet emailed to you immediately to start studying and you gain access to his daily newsletter, The Opening Call, a $149 value. The cost to attend is only $295 and the full five hours will be archived. Don't miss this live special event Wednesday, August 10th with Basil Chapman. For all the details and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com right now. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. I had an eye doctor earlier this morning, and they were dilated, and it was a rush to get back here. So the uh, my uh, my vision is a little blurry, plus all this white uh, stuff on my screens out here. I'm trying to keep the my room as dark as I can. So uh, uh, I'm having a little difficulty reading some of the uh, some of the numbers out there. So I apologize if I kind of screw up. But let's go take a look at LTBR. LTBR is uh, what? It is uh, Lightbridge uh, Corporation trading out right now at $6.90. It is consolidating with inside its daily profile. This is for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. So the range out here, your support area, 623 resistance at $7.18 out there. We try to take a look at any kind of topping pattern. We don't have one. Now, there is an A to B equals CD pattern out here. Let me uh, do this on my other screen. I give you at least the price projection area. So the one to one level of this A to B equals C D is going to take us up Dan to the uh, 746 area. Now I just want to check the uh, volume out here on the trading day of July 20th. That had volume of 213,000 shares and it was passed with uh, lighter volume, 165,000 shares. Uh, hold on, hold on. Uh, one, yeah, lighter volume still. Uh, nonetheless, you've got A to B equals C D pattern, but uh, you've got resistance at 718. Again, the one to one price projection level at 746. Now, you don't have any kind of bearish reversal candle or anything, just a good old fashioned consolidation between support and resistance. If price could take out 718, the signal then would be that LTBR should move back to the looks like 843 area out there, and that would be the TD nine count breakdown resistance level. So you've got 843 on the daily, Dan. You've got 950 on the uh, weekly. Now, price is above the uh, top of its weekly profile. So that's bull. It's just waiting for the daily to be able to get through its sellers. Again, no sellers hanging out at $7.18. So if price can get through 718, you've got 843 as one target, 950 as the other target out there. So I hope that helps you out. Stock charts look uh, pretty good other than that uh, consolidation. So thanks so much for the request. I don't have any other requests at this stage here. I did say that we would go, well, let's, I did say we'd go take a look at gold. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, during the, uh, I think, during the top of the show. So let's get back to, um, first going to be the ES Mini that shows up on the uh, chart. So we talked about that uh, TD9 count top out here. And uh, uh, so I'm just going back to the 30-minute charts. We'll go take a look at all the 30-minute charts here momentarily. Right when we started the show, what we saw was topping patterns for the 30-minute time frame for each of the equity future contracts out there, right? These are the topping patterns that I use. They're not present at every top or at every bottom out there, but when they are present, you pay attention. So a 30 minute time frame right now, what the ES is doing, it's got 15 minutes left in the session. I don't know whether price is gonna close below 41.56, but 41.56 is that TD9 count breakout area. If price does close below that, that tells you that the ES mini is gonna head lower. Now, head lower to where? Well, the next area that I would be looking at, first I'm just looking at the other time frame charts to see what they show us. So the very next area is really where price is about trading right now, and that's at 41.46. I'm going up to the 200, the 200, the two hour chart out there. 
And the reason, so although I don't have a valid topping signal out here, what we do have is a bearish structured two-hour profile that price closed above for more than two consecutive bars. A counter trend move, that would be what we're in right now because we've got this bullish move, a counter trend move, well, I, I, I really don't know. This will answer that. A counter trend move, if that's all this is, would find support at the center of that bearish structured profile. That's at 41.46. So you got price pulling back and testing that area as well. Price closes below that. Then it suggests to move to 41.15. As I take a look at the four-hour time frame chart, this May, the uh, four-hour bar here does not complete until 2 p.m. So we're really, you know, it's potential going, potentially going to form a road's momentum indicator top. But we're too far away from that from an hour standpoint. The same for the five-hour chart out there. But you are in bar number nine on a TD9 count. Again, Today's bar has got to close above the bar of close number five out there in order for this pattern to complete. And then if it does, then what we're looking at is a move back to 48.1. But right now, price is sitting at a counter trend move for support out there. You want to watch that 41.46 level. Now, let's uh, get the uh, gold charts fired up here. December contract for Goldilocks. See what it is uh, doing. Uh, it was trading up uh, about uh, 13 bucks or so, I thought. Uh, 14.60 as we speak right now. 1805.80 is the uh, number. Now, 1805 is really going to be a key area. Uh, as soon as these charts here populate, we'll, uh, we'll ex explain the reasons why. And that is because, uh, well, let me, actually, let me, give me a second here. Sorry. Uh, get to a different chart. Okay, so we take a look at gold. We take a look at Goldilocks. Actually, the level that we want to see it close above today is 1797, and that's the top of its daily profile out there. But really, uh, Friday was a uh, was a confirmed sell the D point pattern. So now that says that price really needs to close above the high of that uh, dark cloud cover candle formation. That's an 1812 even Stephen. So if price can close above 1812, gold will have negated any topping signals that it has, and then that will suggest move up to 1868.50. That's the next TD9 count breakdown area. If I look at a five-hour time frame chart, there was a TD9 count top that had formed out here. Price just simply pulled back and tested support. It closed above 1812, the bearish structured profile, which suggests higher price. We've really got the same kind of pattern on the four-hour chart, although this was a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. That says that price needs to take out that high. I presume that's going to be that 1812 level. Yep. So so a lot of resist, well, a lot of potential resistance, 18, 12. But take that area out, and then you're off to the races. Those races should take you to the 1868 area. On a 60-minute time frame out here, you've got a TD9 count top that is forming. Boy, nothing is easy out there, right? Uh, so that TD9 count top should complete by, uh, as we get off the air, by 12 noon out here. And uh, so that says we could see a top. Now, that's another 60-minute bar. This is, well, this is the bar. If, if price closes over this high, so this is the cool thing about this pattern. If price does not turn back from here, we're talking about Goldilocks, the current high is 18.0640, but there may be a higher high in the next, um, you know, 12 minutes or so. Whatever the high of this bar is, if price closes above that on an hourly basis, tells you about a strong momentum to move to the upside with resistance being at 1809. So how are we going to summarize Goldilocks here? First, 1812 is really the key number out there. In fact, if you got a 60-minute TD9 count top and then it goes on the next hour or two and it takes out that level and you get above 1812, that would then be the signal that gold is getting rally, ready to rally out there. Now, that would be one level that would say gold is ready to rally. The second area that we would need to take a look at when it comes to gold Locks and really, quite frankly, um, all of these uh, significant instruments out here is going to be how is gold trading in all the major currencies? Because if it's trading higher in one currency, such as in the U.S. dollars, but trading lower in another currency, which it's not right now, then we'd have natural buyers and natural sellers. Right now, what we have inside of Goldilocks appears to be all natural buyers. It's moving higher in terms of U.S. dollars. It's at a new high in terms of uh, yen, euros out there. It's moving higher in terms of yen. It's at a new high, taking out Friday's high in terms of pounds out there. So gold, uh, the rally that we see in gold should hold, even though we got that CD9 count, that could just simply signal a retracement back to the 1797 level out there. But that looks... Uh, pretty good out here. So we've got about 15 seeconds. Let me uh, switch over to my 30-minute um, charts that we uh, started with here. We'll get the screen over there. We'll see what each of those equity future contracts are doing on their 30-minute time. Whoops, wrong one. Here we go. Shoot. 
screens. This one should be, uh, there we go. So now you should have the 30-minute uh, time frame charts. You can see the S-Mini test at 4156. The NQ has pulled back and tested a key level of support. That's 13,219. The Dow testing support, 32,819. The breakout level and the uh, Russell 2000 testing the support of its uh, green oscillator and change line. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. DFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back up, folks. We got the Dow up 117, S&P's up 12. That's about three tenths of a percent. Nasdaq's up 21. Russell's up 21 as well. The semis are back uh, 71 bucks out there. Uh, we've got a request to take a look at Apple. Uh, this is from inside the uh, Tiger's Den. If we take a look at Apple out here, what do we know? On a daily time frame, that's uh, I'll just simply expand out that chart. We'll take a look at it. This also has attained that uh, TD9 count uh, topping uh, pattern out here. Um, all price needs to do is close above this bar number five. So it's going to form a TD9 count top today. It's going to complete that pattern tomorrow. I mean, you could still see a higher high tomorrow that would set the top. Don't know if it's today or tomorrow. Either one, what they should do is then take price back to support. And the first level of support for Apple is going to be its oscillator and change on that's currently printed at 161.99. Now, when we get to a daily topping pattern out here, such as the TD9 counts, what we'd like to go take a look at is uh, the intraday chart, see if we've got any type of topping signals. If we're going to see a top inside a market, we're going to first see them take place on the intraday charts, and we're certainly going to see levels of support fail. We don't have a top on the 15-minute chart out here, bottom right, but price is simply holding support. 
and uh, support is its uh, daily profile. We've got the same thing on a 30-minute time frame chart. Price is pulled back to a support area, so that is not held. 164.71 at key level if you're watching for the 30-minute time frame. We've got the same thing on a 65-minute support is held. On the 130-minute, even though we've got a Rhodesman to indicator, top price is above the uh, resistance of the top of that uh, profile. So it's it's really a neutral signal out here. So we are seeing the inklings of a topping signal uh, for the intraday charts, but no levels of support have broken. And that's really a key area out there, right? Because in a bull market, price, what's it supposed to do? It's supposed to pull back and test those levels of support out there. So real quickly here, I'll take a quick peek at the indices. This should be able to uh, take a quick peek at what the semis are doing out there, see if they're pulling back to any areas of support. So in the case of the semis, their area of support is that green oscillator and change line. And that's currently printed at the 2948 level out here. So uh, even though you've got them um, trading lower by 70.51, price ran into resistance 38.2.38, where it should have found resistance, the TD9 count breakdown area, and now it's just simply pulling back to support. Folks, thanks so much for joining me. Don't forget, Larry's going to be uh, doing the shows from now on, from 1 to 2, just as I'm doing the shows from 11 to noon out there. So have a great lunch, and uh, come back, and, uh, well, I will see you tomorrow, 11 o'clock. Take care, folks.